The following presentation was recorded at the 2016 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, please visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond sponsors in 2016 for helping make these videos possible. First of all, thank you everybody for uh, sticking through here to the end of the Southeast Linux Fest. I know a lot of people have packed up and left already. I appreciate you sticking around for another Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm going to be talking about the barbecue and community here. If, uh, if I offend your barbecue sensibilities, be sure to let me know. Uh, there are maybe vegetarians in the audience. I'd just like to apologize ahead of time. There's going to be a lot of discussion of meat. Um, my name is Michael Hall. I'm a community manager for Run2. Uh, I'm also a big lover of barbecue. I have been cooking it and consuming it for as long as I've been involved in community stuff. So, to start out with, um, what, what exactly is a community? Uh, in John Bacon's book, The Art of Community, he says that a community is a collection of people who interact together in the same environment. And it's that togetherness that really makes it a community. And it got me thinking, you know, what, another thing that really brings people together is barbecue. Everybody loves barbecue, so they do vegetarian. Most people love barbecue. And barbecues are a great way of getting people together. Uh, I would know because this is how I got together with my first uh, two logo team in Central Florida. This was a giant barbecue I threw at my house. Uh, we had about 50, 60 people show up for that. Free food is a great motivator to get communities together. So, um, barbecue is made primarily of three things. You get your meat, your sauce, and your smoke. If you don't have one of those three things, it's really hard to call it barbecue, especially smoke, which is why sous vide is not the same as barbecue. <laughs> uh, but these kinds of reflect different parts of what we are involved in in the open source and open source community. So, being a lover of community and of barbecue, um, I've put together this presentation where I'm going to compare the two together. Every barbecue place has their own secret sauce. I don't know what's going on with this one. Just over there. Where is it? That's fine. Okay. Okay. Signature sauce. Their sauce that is just there, their unique flavor, it's everything, that uniqueness that is that, that's their secret sauce. Uh, and it occurred to me that in open source projects, that secret sauce is our community. Community will go and add a very distinct, very unique flavor to whatever it is that you're cooking. Sauces are great, sauces make everything better. Uh, some people may disagree with this, but those people are wrong. <laughs> uh, sauces also add their own unique flavor, so you can change the, the meat, the, the taste of the meat that you're cooking based on the sauce you have, and you can change it pretty drastically too, to tailor specifically what you enjoy and what your audience enjoys. And communities are the same way. The people that you have involved in your projects are going to change the way people consume those projects and the way people feel about those projects. So picking the right kind of community people to be involved in your project and putting them in the right places is really important to getting that, that flavor that you want your product to have. So if this is your community, please try to cut off here at the top. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, your four basic types of community are uh, the same as your four basic types of sauces. You can make your sweet sauce, your spicy sauce, your vinegar sauce, and this is part of the country, your mustard sauce. And uh, these things have their own distinct flavor, they're their own specialty, their own meats that they pair really well with. And uh, communities are the same way. So the, the sweet sauce is your most basic common sauce. It is the one that you will find in just about any restaurant. If you're going to have just one sauce, it's most likely going to be a sweet sauce. It may not be everyone's favorite sauce, but everybody likes the sweet sauce. If that's all you have, you're not going to be that upset. Um, it's the one that you're going to find most commonly 
It is really the bare minimum that any restaurant needs in terms of cost. And so that lines up really well with your user community. No matter what your project is or what you're trying to do, if you don't have a user community, you really don't have much of a community at all. Sweet sauces are good for people who just want to come in and enjoy the food, have something good to eat. They're not picky about barbecue. They're not going to argue that you've got the wrong sauces or the wrong prices. They just want to come in and get some ribs or something. And get. Users are the same way. They don't really care that much about what language your project's written in or what kind of infrastructure it's running on. They just like the project and they want to come in and they want to enjoy the project and they want to share that with the user. And when you, when you advance a little bit, um, you move on to your spicy sauces. They're basically like sweet sauces, only they're a little bit bolder, a little bit louder, that have some heat to them. Um, second most popular sauce that you'll find in most restaurants. And that one really lines up well to your advocate community, because your advocates come from your user community, that sweet sauce base that you have, but they've got a little bit more passion, a little bit more drive. They're going to go out there, they're going to you know, bang the drums for you. They really appreciate um, new work that's coming out, changes that are coming out. Uh, they get really excited by that and they want to go out and want to spread that excitement. Now this is one of my favorite sauces. It's popular uh, in some parts of the Carolinas, but not in many other places. But uh, a vinegar sauce is basically just like an apple cider vinegar, some red pepper flakes, some black paper, a little bit of salt. It's a very basic sauce. It doesn't really have a lot to it but it makes a huge difference when you put it on. Not only does it add a little bit of extra moistness to whatever you're putting it on, but it actually, the, the acidity in the vinegar brings out a lot more of that flavor in the meat. And it doesn't add a lot of its own. It's got a little bit of heat and a little bit of salt and a little bit of tang from the vinegar, but mostly what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring out the elements of the food itself. It's not going to mask it, it's not gonna overpower it, it's just going to take whatever's there and it's going to make it a little bit better. And this is really your infrastructure community. These are the people who write your docs, who moderate your forums, who build the web services that your community relies on to get the work done. They're not necessarily building anything into the project itself, they're not necessarily changing the project itself. But they're making it more accessible, they're making it easier to get to, and they, in the long run, they make it better. And then we've got the mustard sauce. Um, Mustard sauce took me a while to uh, to appreciate. Um, it, mustard sauce and people who like mustard sauce are kind of their own food. Uh, they like the things that they like, and they don't want to be told that they're wrong about them. Uh, and they certainly don't want to change uh, what they're doing. <laughs> they're very sure sure that this is what they want, and they really they, they push the bounds of um, what what you're doing with your barbecue. So these are your power users. Um, they're going to push your project in directions you didn't necessarily expect it to go, and they're going to tell you that that's what they want it to do, and you know, you're going to try and support them as best you can with that. And they'll tell everybody else, too. And they will. They will tell everybody else that their way of doing it is right and everyone else's is wrong. All right, so those, those are your community sauces. So let's go put a bunch of sauce on our project, right? Well. Not so much, because the problem with sauces is that sauces don't scale. Uh, we, we talk about scale a lot in open source software and technical stuff. But what, what does it mean by scaling sauce? So imagine you have, um, you, you've got a project. You put a lot of passion into your project. You've sat there for 12 hours walking in smoke at 210 degrees, uh, facing it every once in a while. You, you put a lot into this. You're proud of it. It tastes good. It looks good. You're ready to bring it out to the world and put some community on it. So you bring in a little bit of community. What's going on with this picture? All right, so you bring in a little bit of community. Puts it on, it adds more flavor, brings out the flavor of meat, and enhances it with its own sweetness or spiciness or whatever. It's good. You made your project better, you're happy, you're really enjoying it. Community sauce is great. Let's keep adding more community sauce, right? Well, it starts to get a little bit overwhelming uh, after a little while. So you start to uh, lose the meat uh, to, to the flavor of the sauce. The, the sauce takes over, uh, and, and the meat kind of takes the back seat. Um, and if you don't stop it, if you just keep adding more and more community, then things go very, very badly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and you've got something that's not, not what you wanted it to be at, at the start. 
And yes, I wrote a perfectly good pork sandwich for this slide. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrilege! No, no, no. Just add more pork until it evens out. <laughs> so, so sauces don't scale. So you need to make sure that you have the right amount of community for the amount of project that you have. And that, that's the same with barbecue. Barbecue is about balance. Balance between the meat and the sauce. Balance between fat and lean. Balance in the heat when you're cooking sauce. So, so what am I saying with that? Am I, am I saying that too much community is bad, or that you can limit the amount of community that you have? Uh, being a community manager myself, that would be a bit of a bold statement to make. Um, but the, the, the point I'm making is that your community is not just a condiment. Community can be a sauce, but that is not all that community can be. So once we went over, they're still there, they're still adding layers to it. But Really, a really important part of the community that you need to foster are the ones that bring the meat to the table. They need to be the ones that are contributing to the project itself and making the project better and growing the project as you grow your community. Because if you're growing a barbecue and suddenly you've got twice as many guests coming over, you can't just put out twice as much sauce and say that it's going to be good. You have to increase the amount of meat you have. So if you want to grow your project with the community, you need to make sure that your community is involved in the actual project itself and not just adding to it. Alright, and speaking of meat uh, that, that you can bring, uh, I picked four basic barbecue meats. There are others out there, but these are some of the most popular. And uh, these are going to be the projects that your community is going to gather around. Brisket is one of my favorites. Um, it's also one of the more difficult pieces of meat to cook on. Um, because you have to pay a lot of attention to detail on this. How much fat's on the brisket, um, the temperature that you're cooking it at, how long you're cooking it for. It's very, it's very easy if you're not paying attention to ruin a brisket. So you, you need to know what you're doing. The people who cook good brisket get a lot of respect. So these are like your kernel developers, your, your internal plumbing, the people who are working at the lowest levels of the staff. Because they need to know what they're doing to a high degree. And if they mess something up, then things go bad quickly. And again, just like people who food brisket, these people get a lot of respect for being able to do what they do. Now, now ribs, ribs aren't quite as difficult as brisket. Uh, ribs are also one of the more popular things that people uh, like to eat. It's something that markets well. You put it on commercials, you've got chilies with their baby diapers, and all that. Um, they, they take a little bit of work. They, they take a little bit more sauce than brisket does, so you need to have a little bit more community in one of uh, And these are your middleware, your open stack, your databases, your web servers, that kind of thing. They're a little bit higher up the stack than the kernel, but they still require quite a bit of knowledge of what you're doing. Um, it is still easy to get these wrong if you don't know what you're doing, so you got to pay attention to detail. Um, Ribs actually require quite a bit of prep work before you put them on the smoker. They're probably the most complicated to prepare before you put them on. Um, and in middleware, it's like that in a lot of ways, too. It's got to be ready to go and use before you start putting it out there. Now, pulled pork is very popular here in the Carolinas. Um, I'm sure any of you were around the speaker sponsor dinner, you had some of that. Um, pulled pork is easy to do as long as you are patient. So you have to be in it for the long run. It takes a long time to go to full pork properly. Um, but that's really all you have to do. You just have to be patient and keep at it. There's not a lot of technique to cooking the full pork. And it's also really good for sauces. Full pork loves sauce, and sauces can do a lot with it. It can really change it um, much more drastically than it is. Full porks are your end user facing app. They're the ones that are going to have most community and where the community is going to have the most effect in the direction of the take. And finally, we've got chicken or any kind of poultry roti. Um, this is kind of an outlier barbecue because you don't really have to cook poultry that long uh, compared to your other meats. It, it's more, it's very light meat, it cooks fast. Um, sauces can really be added after the fact on the side. So I'm comparing these to online services, and this is one of the more sketchy analogies that I can come up with for this. <laughs> but I had to put chicken in uh, So online services are easy to put up. Um, you can get them up and going quickly. 
the community can form around the service after the fact. They don't have to be part of the actual putting it together. All right, so we've got our meats, we've got our sauces, now it's time to get cooking. The third key to proper barbecue is the smoke. And the smoke has several jobs. It's not just there to provide heat. It's not just there to make us look cool when we're standing around for 12 hours waiting for dinner to cook. With the beer in your hand. The, the, the smoke is responsible for uh, delivering a lot of the flavor to the meat. The flavor both from the smoke itself and also from the sauces and the dry room that you put in the meat. When the smoke penetrates down into the meat, it's pulling in those flavors with it. So this is the way of communicating um, with your barbecue. So these are our four ways of communicating. There are more than this, but these are the basics. Um, figuring the seed, oak, and apple, or any kind of fruity wood. Uh, hickory is a very common one. It's got a nice savory flavor. It's not overpowering, but it's got a very distinct flavor of its own. Um, it's a very cool burning wood, so it doesn't keep your barbecue too hot. Uh, it's really good for the long cooking meats like cold pork and pork and stuff like that. So this is like IRC in a lot of ways. Uh, it's used by a lot of communities. Um, it's good for long conversations, long relationships that you're building. Um, and it doesn't tend to flare up like a lot of other communication methods can. Mesquite, on the other hand, is uh, a very popular, uh, mar popular to market uh, flavor. But mesquite burns really hot. It has a tendency to flare up and uh, cause damage when it does that. For that reason, mesquite is a lot like a mailing list. Um, things can go bad really quickly on a mailing list. It gets really hot really fast. But it's also really good for a lot of meats, and people really like the flavor of it. So people still use mailing lists quite a bit, despite that. Now, oak is a very mild wood. It doesn't add a lot of flavor. It burns cool like hickory does. But it's really there just to provide the heat and whatever flavors you have on your cloth and your rub. It doesn't add a lot on its own. Uh, these are kind of like forms. They're, they're very popular, but they don't necessarily change the nature of the product itself. Um, they're good for, again, long relationship building and long conversations. And finally, we've got apple. And, and there's a whole category of fruity woods out there. Um, they're, they provide a subtle sweet flavor to it. It's not quite as bold as the mesquite, but it's got a very distinct flavor of its own. Um, it's really good for light meats. Uh, it kind of clashes with some of the heavier meats, like brisket. It doesn't work well with spicy sauces or, or mustard sauces. So you really kind of want it on its own or with a sweet sauce. And these I'm comparing to Slack and all the other new uh, methods of communication because. They, they're, they're a little bit sweet. Um, they, they just, you can see the appeal of them, because like, you can smell the appeal of apple wood. But it, it doesn't work for all projects. It especially doesn't work for the projects that are better off with mailing with their IRC, where they need uh, a different kind of communication. Now, I've gone through a lot of different choices in sauces and meats and smokes. And those of you who want to do the math can probably figure out how many different combinations of those things you can put together for any given meal. Uh, and a lot of those will work just great. Some of them will be terrible, but most of them will be good. Um, and even if Linux isn't about choice, barbecue is about choice. And community is about choice. So make sure that you have something for everyone. There's no one right way to do barbecue, and there's no one right way to do community. So. If you like brisket, great. If somebody else likes pork, that's great too. If you like slack, if they like IRC, great. Use what works best, use what everybody enjoys. Don't tell anybody that their way of doing it's wrong and your way is right. Even if that means bringing vegetables to your barbecue, um, you do, you, again, barbecue is about balance. It can't be all dip. I don't have a great analogy for vegetables and community. Sorry. Um, all right, bringing it all back together. Um, Barbecue is about people coming together and having fun. And really, that's what community is all about. Coming together, having fun. It doesn't really so matter so much what the project is, as long as everybody involved is enjoying it. All right, that's it. Who's hungry now? What? Uh, the barbecue is at Midwood Smokehouse on the other side of town. Yeah, and watch out.
Uh, you can. I have a flight ticket. Yes. I was there last year, though, so I came back for All right. Well, that was shorter than I thought it was going to be. Thank you all for coming to self. Do you have time for questions? I do. Do you have questions about this? So, so. <laughs> <laughs> you really must have been a topic. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. If you, if you don't want to. No, no, I'll answer. Okay. So, so, so I'm one of the organizers of a fairly large Linux group. Mm -hmm. And um, we have multiple locations that we meet, some weekly, some only monthly. Um, and there are different people show up to each of them. We have a, like a noob friend friendly area for the noobs to come in and sit down and help, and we help them wipe that shit OS off their machines. Only the people on the internet can hear you. Uh, uh, if you're gonna ask a question, eventually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to. Forget it. Is that on? Can repeat your question? How about that? Yeah, I'll repeat it. Okay. 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 So, so, so we're trying to have it where um, we have something for everyone, and they can come in and, and learn what they want and take what they want away. Um, a lot of the younger people, we're all, most of us are gray beards and old, and a lot of the younger people don't communicate the same way we do. We use email. And none of us have even have Twitter accounts. We don't. We don't do Facebook. We don't do any of that stuff. And we're trying to get the younger crowd, just somebody there to step up to provide those channels for the younger. You know, so you have like a, a cool kids group. Any thoughts on how to do that? So, so the question I got this was how how do how do we get older community people communicating? Using the mediums of the newer community people, or, or just getting the newer community people involved using that new communication. Uh, yeah, you, you, getting them engaged in the group. Yeah. You, well, well, I think that question almost the way you interpret it is a way you can look at. It. Do we need to have a second form of communication, or does someone need to either get with the times or go with what is you know tried and true? So it, it can go both ways. Um, you know, so never dismiss the new ways of doing things. If that's where your new people are, then that's where you need to be also. Even if it's not the best communication method for your project, or you don't think it's the best, still have somebody there. Um, try it out, engage it. Let, let them know that you're you know, making that effort. And also, you can start bringing them in from there to your existing communication channel. Something you have to think you have to be aware of is bifurcating the team. It's okay. Yeah. To, it's, it's okay to have all the other communication channels, and it's good to have them there, like broadcasting on Twitter and other things. But it's, I guess, you need to have a core. Yeah, but then so you have that problem even if you stick with the same thing. Um, yeah. A bunch of suffers from that. We've got a bunch of IRC channels and a bunch of mailing lists, and every time somebody says. Oh, we should make a new mailing list for this. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. we've already got enough. No, nope, you can't keep up with them all. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's the same thing and just more of it, or it's different things, you're gonna have the same. And, and I'm very active in the forums, but I don't touch the IRC or the mailing list. Right. So, really, you need somebody who's willing to um, How do you have, have one step, have one foot in both camps for a little while. Try them both out. Try and bring people yeah. from one side to the other and back the other way and see which one works best. It could have been old of course. Uh, we're we're <laughs> in a bunch of work experimenting now with Slack and with Gitter and a couple of the other the new ones. Uh, we've been on Facebook and Twitter for a while, but not not heavily. So yeah, there, there's no simple answer to that, and there's no right answer to which one of the two you should go with long term. A lot of us old guys are. Are privacy centric, so I will never use my real name on Twitter. I will never use my real name on Facebook. And in fact, my network blocks both of those. So it's not really an option because they track everything you do online. I don't want to be tracked. Period. So, so it's trying to find somebody who doesn't care about that as much, that's willing to step up. And most of the old guys are kind of like me in our group. There's actually. Uh some open source solutions for things like Slack, especially Blackjack. Um, 
that you just throw up on the server and then have people connect there. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you call it. Yeah, I installed matters most, but. Uh, uh, so the, the thing to be aware of is if. It's another thing that somebody else has to if, if you are, can maintain. If your privacy concerns are proving to be an obstacle to new people coming on board, then that's something that you need to think about and weigh again. Well, well, we have a, a huge group of users. I mean, we've got 1,500 people. So it's just shocking to me that we can't find one who's willing to tweet. Hey, yeah. You can find anybody and you use Twitter already. How about the new people who are coming on and using Twitter? Have you offered to let them be the official person to tweet? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, you got to be honest, right? Yeah. But, but. Somebody nicer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so a lot of times uh, people need a little bit of a push to step up and take over things like that. So if you know somebody that you think would be good at it, just ask them, hey, if I give you Twitter credentials, will you tweet regularly about what we're doing? It, it's easier to pick one or two people and ask them directly than to put out this product. We need somebody to do this. Are there any other questions? I really wasn't expecting questions for this presentation. But that was a good one. That, that led to a very good conversation. Oh, can I ask a barbecue question? You can, yeah. Do you have one of those green eggs and if so do you like it? I don't know. John has got one of those green eggs. He swears by it. But no, I've got the uh, I used to have one of the offset barrel smokers, but now I've got a little propane one because it takes less work and I have to become lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, do you still get barbecue out there? It's still awesome. I do, yes. Especially since I work from home, so I can just start it like early in the morning, and I just sit there doing my work, keeping an eye on it out the window. It's really nice. Make sure you're not on conference calls all the time. Oh, I do. Yeah, I get an hour break each time. So the nice thing about barbecue is it really doesn't take a lot of like constant work. You just have to check on it every hour or so. Well, the beer needs to get drunk, right? The beer needs to get drunk. I, I most definitely do not drink beer while I'm working. No, I've never done that. It's noon somewhere. What? What's the night coffee called? It's uh, coffee. It's noon somewhere. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and I hope to see all of you again next few years. When we were trying to name Google, we actually went through thousands of names. The name of the company has now become its own verb in the dictionary. Let's Google it. You can Google it. Work the Google on the internet machine. Six simple letters on a plain white um, page. Being able to do searches in any language about any country. Thing. When you're putting in a question, they'd finish your question Google. for you. We have been working on organizing the world's information. Our goal is to digitize all the books. Today, Google announced Gmail. 
Email for everyone for free. Google is mapping the entire world to make it more accessible to people everywhere. Google is jumping into the mobile market. Android was built as an open platform for everyone to use and build on. This is Chrome. It's a faster, safer browser for the open web. Google is unveiling what they call the knowledge graph. We needed to understand the world the way you and I do, as objects and relationships between objects. Today, Google's got another useful feature with Google Now. We are providing you with answers before you've even asked for one them. One of my favorite cards is the one that shows traffic data for your commute to and from work. Think about how far Google has evolved from the 10 blue links. We asked ourselves, how can we assist you right when you need it? Okay, Google. Call the Walker Art Center. It's not just desktops, phones, and laptops anymore. Okay, Google. Eugenia한테 5분 늦는다고 문자 보내줘. It's watches with displays, car consoles with displays. Okay, Google. Let's go to the aquarium. How can we help you get things done in as few steps as possible? Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Show me my photos of Lucas with the pumpkin. But we have to remember we have a long way to go. This is just the tip of the iceberg.